Okay, so we are going to talk about cells this chapter, and I just have a couple of lectures for you, um, some basic cell information. We'll talk about um, prokaryotes versus eukaryotes. We'll talk about um, types of structures inside of cells, and we'll go into a little bit more detail talking about cell membranes. But in this lecture, we're just going to compare prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So first of all, this gives us an opportunity to talk about taxonomy a little bit, how we classify organisms. So our, um, all organisms fit into one of three domains. We have the bacteria or the eubacteria, the RK or RK bacteria, and the eukaryota or eukaryo. Um, so the eukaryotes are the organisms with nuclei, and then these two uh, bacteria kingdoms are those that don't have nuclei. So we're going to talk about the eukaryotes, the archaeobacteria, and the cyanobacteria when we talk about prokaryotes. So cyanobacteria are those blue-green algae. So most likely our oxygen in the atmosphere first came from cyanobacteria many, many years ago. So looking at prokaryotes, what are some general characteristics of prokaryotes? Well, they don't have a nucleus. So pro is first or before, um, and karyote is actually referring to kernel, so that's referring to the nucleus. So prokaryote is referring to before the nucleus. So they don't have nuclei or other membrane-bound organe organelles. They do have ribosomes. Um, they need to make proteins, so they would have those but they don't have other structures that we typically think of that are in the eukaryotic cell. So um, they have DNA, it's just not in a nucleus. They have ribosomes and they have cytoplasm and a cell membrane. So those things are similar to our cells, but they're missing a whole lot of other things. So the eukaryotes are all our other kingdoms. The protista, so that's protozoans and protists like algae. Uh, the fungi, which you're familiar with, mushrooms, molds, yeast, and the plantae, which we're pretty familiar with, right? We got bushes, grasses, flowers, trees, and animalia, and there's all kinds of animals that you're familiar with. So the eukaryotes, they do have a plasma membrane. Um, they may have a cell wall. They have a number of different organelles, and they have a nucleus and a DNA. So some of the organelles that are common to all eukaryotes would be endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria. Again, they have the ribosomes, um, and they have nucleus. So how are prokaryotes and eukaryotes different? <clears throat> so first of all, let's look at the DNA in um in the two cells. So here you can see circular DNA in the prokaryote, and down here you see linear DNA in the eukaryote. So um, another difference, single-stranded DNA versus double-stranded DNA, so our DNA is wrapped around itself. Um, the prokaryotic cell, their DNA is considered naked because it's not wrapped around these histones. So our DNA is actually wrapped around several proteins, which kind of give it some bulk before it becomes a chromosome. And we'll talk about more. We'll talk about that a little bit more on the next slide. Um, something that prokaryotes have that we don't have are these little plasmids. So these plasmids give them give the bacteria special features like the ability to um, withstand penicillin. Um, so some resistance, some special um, advantages, let's say, are found on those plasmids. So here is the two sets of DNA. So again, we have that circular single-stranded DNA. Um, in the prokaryote, you might have some extra plasmids with special features. Here is our DNA. We know that we're typically thinking of it in the form of a chromosome, but before it forms a chromosome, we have our double-stranded helix, and then that strand gets wrapped around these proteins called histones. And then the histones are further coiled up, coiled, 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 until they form chromosomes. So um, this actually makes it difficult for our polymerase to read DNA at all times, which is part of our um, gene regulation. So we only are going to unpack our DNA or uncoil it, make it visible. Um, when we need certain proteins to be made. 
So here's another difference talking about the ribosomes of the um, two types of cells, prokaryote versus eukaryote. The prokaryotic ribosome is a bit smaller, and I bet you could have guessed that because they're smaller organisms. Um, and this is going to be kind of confusing. The numbers, you don't really have to understand the numbers. You have to understand that the numbers are different. So the prokaryotic cell, we'll talk about it having a 70S ribosome. Um, and that S has to do with sedimentation. So it's kind of tricky to think about it um, in size because it's more of a measurement of sedimentation. So there's two subunits that make up a prokaryotic uh, ribosome, and one is a 50S and one is a 30S. So you have the bigger subunit and your smaller subunit. So down here I have an E. coli ribosome. So you can see there's two major RNAs. Remember that rRNA that our RNA makes up the ribosome. So there's two major components there um, that make up this subunit. And then those lighter shades of red and lighter shades of blue, those are proteins. So ribosomes are actually our RNA coiled up with a bunch of proteins. Um, so that would be the prokaryotic version. Our version over here is a little bit larger. It's an ADS ribosome. Um, its subunits are 60 and 40. So again, some differences. We have a handful of different RNAs that are going to make up our ribosome and a bit more protein factors that go into that subunit. Here's another difference uh, between the two types of cells. We're looking at their cell walls. You know some of our uh, eukaryotic cells have cell walls like plants do and fungi do. And, um, and then the eukaryotes have one of two types of cell walls. And I'll just talk about the eubacteria because they're more common. The eubacteria have a substance called peptidoglycan. So maybe you see peptide and glucose in there. Um, so this is a protein bound to a carbohydrate that makes up part of their cell wall. So this is their cell membrane, and then they have a cell wall, and then um, bacteria even have a capsule outside of that. So they use peptidoglycan. Plants you're familiar with, they use cellulose in their cell walls um, to give it structure. And then over here, the yellow portion, this is the chitin that is found in fungi. <clears throat> So our last difference has to do with how cells reproduce. So um, bacteria have the simplest form of reproduction, and that is binary fission. So the DNA simply replicates itself. So now I have two circular DNAs. And this graphic isn't quite correct in its representation. Uh, this DNA would actually fuse with the membrane. So when the membrane separates, it separates the DNA as well. Um, so the DNA would fuse with the membrane and then you would start um, a little fission between the two. Um, a cleavage starts to, to just pinch inward and then uh, that's going to divide the cell. And then um, the rest of the eukaryotes is, are either going to um, replicate through mitosis if they replicate um, asexually. So just making copies of the DNA and making exact copies of the original cell so you produce clones. Um, or they might go through meiosis, so these are your higher level organisms, um, like us, the animals. Um, we're going to go through, the majority of us are going to go through meiosis, and um, remember that's going to cut our chromosome number in half, which means then it's going to have to combine with another um, gamete in order to form um, a new organism, or the zygote that then becomes the new organism. So. Prokaryotes replicate through binary fission, and eukaryotes either through mitosis or meiosis. And um, that's all the differences I have between the prokaryotes and the eukaryotes. So we talked about um, the, the nuclei, we talked about the organelles, we talked about differences between ribosomes, and differences in the cell membrane, as well as how they reproduce.